So buying and owning a performance car can be quite a funny situation. They cost more than normal cars to run, they cost more than normal cars to buy, parts are generally more expensive, modifying them is generally more expensive than normal cars, but we just keep coming back to them. If you're in the market for a performance car on a budget, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna be running through some of my top picks for performance cars that you can pick up for anything between 2,000 and 10,000 pounds. So let's get into it. First of all, if you are new to the JJB YouTube channel, then welcome. I really appreciate you clicking and watching on this video. If you do enjoy it, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your car friends. But let's get in to pick number one. So this list is in no particular order, but the first cars I'm going to put on there are the Renault Sport Clios. The 172 and the 182. The reason why I put these Renault Sport Clios on the list is that you can't go wrong with either one of them, and they come out of the factory in an incredibly strong format. They have a two litre engine and a 0 to 60 time of around the 7 second mark. They've got plenty of low down grunt so actually getting on the move is not going to be an issue and where these cars come into their own is on a twisty B road, a twisty A road or on track. They quite possibly have the best suspension setup that you can find on any super mini, any hot hatch out of the factory. And although some of the 182s and the special cup editions have been rising in value over the last couple of years, you can pick up a 172 or a 182 for between one and five thousand pounds. Now if you're going to be buying one of these cars, if you're looking for one as a track project, I'd recommend getting one at the lower end of that, since the cars down there will be in worse condition, probably have higher mileage, not as good a service history, and will probably need some work to be done. If you're gonna be using one as a daily or for road purposes, I would recommend looking for a pampered one. Get one at the higher end of the price scale if your budget allows it, but you can get one at the very bottom end if you wish. So sticking with a relatively similar theme with the Clios, then we're gonna be talking about another car which is small, high revving, and very, very fun to drive. So let's get into pick number two, and that pick is the Honda Civic EP3 Type R. Now the EP3 Type R divides people very much down the middle. A lot of people don't like it. A lot of people absolutely love the car because of its infamous two litre VTEC engine. Now if you don't know what VTEC is, listen out because VTEC's about to kick in. So the cars came out of the factory with a relatively bulletproof engine and that car has gone on to become synonymous with a budget performance car. The Honda Civic Type R has a 0 to 60 of around 6.5 seconds. Of course it's got that fantastically high revving 2 litre engine and it handles perfectly. But don't forget about the gear stick though because it is halfway up the centre console. A lot of people don't like the look of it but it is actually alright to drive and it makes you feel like you've got a bit more drive engagement when you're driving along. Now the price for these cars has been dropping fairly significantly over the last couple of years with some examples being seen at under £2,000. Now if you're going to be picking up a car at that price be wary that it's probably going to have higher miles, it's not going to be in the greatest of conditions and it's probably been driven and driven very very hard. Some of the later models including the championship and final editions are going towards the top end of this budget around the £10,000 mark as they become collector's items. But bang for your buck or bang for your pound is the whole point of this video and the Honda Civic Type R delivers exactly that. It's also worth noting that you can also pick up an FN2 for not much more than an EP3 but nobody wants one of them cars because they're not as good. So as we move into pick number three we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to talk about the Mazda MX-5. The perfect pick for people who want a performance car on a budget. Maybe you want to slide it around, maybe you want to get into drifting or maybe you just want a soft top that has a little bit of grunt. The Mazda MX-5 has become synonymous with cheap budget sports car fun and you can pick one of these cars up for around 3500 mark with the 1.8 154 brake horsepower engine. Now obviously you can pick up the Mark 1s and the Mark 2s for a little bit less than that but we're going to be talking about a car that you can keep for a while without having to worry about servicing, repair costs, running costs and all that sort of jazz. So if you're thinking of picking up an MX-5 for around that 3500 mark you're going to have a lot of options available to you. Different spec levels, different ages, different generations, different engine sizes, different configurations, but there's one thing for certain, you're not gonna have a lot to worry about. The engines are generally very, very reliable. There's a huge aftermarket community for these cars, and they're just very, very good to drive. You can actually pick up one of the older generation MX-5 for sub at 1,000 pounds now. So you're after a really low budget performance car, go get yourself one, go slide it around, go have yourself a lot of fun. They're just a very, very good car if you're wanting one on a budget. So moving forward into pick number four then, we're actually gonna talk about a car that was in its fifth generation when it 
it was launched and a car, a badge and a brand that means an awful lot to many many people around the world and that car is the Golf GTI Mark V. After a disappointing fourth generation of GTI the Mark V came along, slapped it all around blew out of the water and set new standards for hot hatches around the world. The Mark V GTI came out with a 2 litre turbocharged engine, a very very poised front wheel drive chassis and also relatively basic looks when you compare it to its rivals being the EP3 Type R and the R26 Megane. The Mark V GTI just did the basics right and it's a car that I can vouch for. I used to work for Volkswagen and have driven quite a few of these including the Edition 35. They are just very very good cars out of the box. They're not special, there's nothing absolutely amazing about them they're just all round good think about the German football team they've got no superstars in there just the whole squad is just absolutely brilliant and they just all work together very very well and that's how I imagine the Golf GTI Mark V and it's very very good now that you can get them for a relatively low budget for around the 3500 mark you're going to pick up a car that needs a little bit of work doing maybe a little bit of maintenance especially if it is a DSG model Bump that budget up to around the 5,000 mark, you're going to get a car that has relatively low miles, 60 or 70,000, that has a relatively good service history and good condition. Bump that up even further and you're going to find the creme de la creme of all GTI Mark V's and you're going to be looking at the Edition 35 which features an uprated turbo and a couple of other uprated parts over the stock model. Overall if you are looking for a budget performance car you literally cannot go wrong with the Golf GTI Mark V. Go out and test drive one and I can guarantee that you will like it. So we're going to be moving into pick number five and if you thought I was doing this video without including at least one practical car then you were wrong. The next car on the list is the Mondeo ST220, a car that I've not had much experience with but I've heard very very good reviews from people who have bought them used. The Mondeo ST220 came with a 3 litre V6 power plant that produced 223 brake horsepower and has enough space to be able to fit you, your partner, your kids, your dog, some shopping, some other shopping, a couple of golf bags, a couple of footballs and probably some goal posts in there as well. It's just a very very practical car, it's massive, absolutely huge. If size is a fear for you, especially when you're driving, do not get one of these cars because they are bigger than most that are on the road. Now the 3 litre V6 engine that powers this car propels the car from 0 to 60 in 7 seconds and with all the V6 grunt that the car has, overtaking is effortless. Now if you're looking to go on track, this probably isn't the car for you unless you're going to make a lot of modifications to the car but it will go on the track and it will perform nonetheless. So the Mondeo ST220 had some rather stiff competition from the likes of Honda's Accord Type R and Skoda's Octavia VRS Estate, which is another car I could have put on this list. But if you're looking for a fast forward and you like the sound of a V6 engine, go grab yourself one of these very, very practical cars. You can pick one up for very, very cheap now. So we have five cars down. We've got two left to go. And I just wanted to say before I get into these last two that they are going to be at the higher end of this price point. So from £7,000 to around the £10,000 mark. And of course, when you get to around this level of price, you're going to have a lot more variety around you. So I picked two cars that stick out particularly to me as very, very good value cars at this level if you're wanting some performance based. So the first of these two cars is the third generation Renault Megane RS. I'm just going to go out there and say this now but I think that this particular car is quite possibly one of the best looking cars that you can buy, performance orientated or not, on a budget. These cars just look absolutely incredible. Of course, we had the previous generation with the stupid, stupid back end of the car, and these just came out, and I was just mind blown. The cars had a 247 brake horsepower engine in the standard form, and this was bumped up throughout the years that it was produced. But the Reynolds Sport cars are renowned for having ridiculously good handling. A lot of people have owned these, gone to a different car, and then come back to them because they missed them, and because they are so good. If you have got a little bit extra in your budget, go get a Cup chassis car, and you will not regret it. I've been in the passenger seat of one going around a track and it was absolutely incredible the amount of grip and the amount of handling that that car had. So the prices for the Mark III Megane do vary quite wildly now. The can go as low down as £5,000 but at that price you're going to get a car that has skyrocket miles on and it's going to be in less than ideal condition. They do go up to the seven to £10,000 mark for cars that are newer, cars that are in better condition and of course with lower mileage but make sure you get a car with a cup chassis because that absolutely 
absolutely transforms it. As we move into pick number seven, then this is going to be the final car. This car comes in at the top end of the budget with a couple of examples now going below the £10,000 threshold. But pick number seven is the GT86. Of course it is. It's the car that I own. It's a car that I've only realised in the last couple of months comes under that £10,000 mark and what a car it is. You only get 197 brake horsepower from the Subaru derived engine, which means you're not going to be winning traffic light races, but the car is incredibly good to drive. The car features brilliant handling, especially if you do upgrade the width of the wheels and tyres as I have on my vehicle. But if you're going to keep the stock privacy tyres, which are also shared with the Prius, you can get the back end out like that. The GT86, the BRZ and the FRS all have an incredible aftermarket support, whether it be in the USA, the UK, Japan. You can put a turbo on it, you can put a supercharger on it, you can port the bodies, you can put individual throttle bodies on there. You can get a lot of power out of this car if you've got the money. Now the cars are starting to trickle under the £10,000 threshold as I've just mentioned and them cars will have higher mileage on them. Be sure to get a car that's above 60,000 miles as that's a recommended interval for the spark plug change. If you've ever owned a Subaru or a Boxer engine, you'll know how ridiculous that is to get to unless you know a good way or if you've got tiny little doll hands. And that's it for this video guys. I think I've pretty much covered as much cars as possible. I've covered sports cars, coupes, hatchbacks, big cars, convertibles, but no doubt there are some cars that I have missed out. So if you think that a car deserves a place on this list, let me know down in the comments below. And you never know, I might do a part two. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Until next time, I'll see you then.